Hi everyone, it's Tarek, and I want to talk about the Hasselblad 205 FCC, my favorite film camera, it's medium format 6x6, and it was last made in 2004. I think this is the best film camera ever made, and I am lucky enough to have it. Um, it's a rare camera, not many people have the camera. I have it, and I'm excited to make this video. So. Uh, this video is going to focus on a particular color and that color this time is red. So I have a few videos and what I did is I took one roll of film and I decided I was going to just take a picture of something that uh, basically had one color and so that's what I'm doing here uh, because that way I can share the camera and what it can do uh, by taking a picture of it. So I shot one roll of film, or yes, we're looking at one picture, and uh, the, um, the unique thing about this camera is basically it has a single uh, spot meter. 100% of the meter reading is just one spot meter. I've covered that in another video, so I won't go that much into detail on uh, the history of the camera as I, as I talk about or film. Uh, but I just wanted to point out for somebody, if you're just watching this video and you hadn't seen the other one, why this camera is unique. It has a 100% spot meter. And we are shooting with Kodak Porta 400. So this is C41 negative film. Before we get into too many details, I just want to show you a quick clip of the day I went to do the photo shoot. This is what we're going to go shoot. This is the uh, storyboard, well, the shoot I planned. This is what I envisioned before, but uh, it's, a, it's a longer story. Short, the short version is this is what we're actually going to have to shoot. So uh, it's going to look something like this, and those are some of the details. Okay. That's it. Let's get this car started. Jeep started. We're on our way. So, I was clearly very excited, and I want to tell you about that, but that's going to come up a little bit later. Uh, the first thing we're going to look at is we're going to look at the spot meter of the Hasselblad 205 FCC. So before we look at the next couple of clips, I just want to tell you a little bit about the spot meter. Uh, it is a very accurate uh, meter. It is very well shielded. So in the uh, when you look through the camera, there's a dotted circle. We'll take a look at that in a moment. And that uh, dotted circle is uh, where the meter reading is going to be from. So just even slightly outside that circle, no light is going to come into the meter. So uh, that's an important thing to uh, know. With this particular lens, the uh, Carl Zeiss Planner uh, F2 uh, one 10 millimeter lens, it's a Car uh, Carl Zeiss T-Star, uh, that ends up being approximately 3.1% of the viewing area from what I see in the manual. So the meter is uh, accurate to 1 12th of a stop. That is very, very precise. And when the camera gives a reading of uh, a shutter speed based on whatever value uh, uh, is set of the aperture on the lens, the corresponding shutter speed to that aperture, it will round to the nearest half uh, uh, stop. But it is actually accurate to 1 12th of a stop. So. Uh, there just weren't enough numbers in there, and this is an old LED, but this camera was built to be so precise, a precision instrument, and it's very exciting to use. So let's take a look at uh, looking through the uh, looking through the viewfinder and uh, what that spot meter reading looks at looks like, and we're going to look at a gray card a white card, and a black card. So when we look at these, just keep in mind that the gray card is the one where we took the initial meter reading and we lock in the light value, and that stays stored in memory in the camera until either 
it is uh, set manually again with the AE lock uh, button. That's the red, red button. Or if the battery is removed. Inserting the battery into the battery holder and inserting it into the camera. To take a meter reading with the Hasselblad 205 FCC with the battery inserted, the next step is to set the ISO. And there's one of two ways to do this. One way is on a film magazine, if it's an electronic film magazine such as this one, there's a dial here. Here it is set to ISO 50. The other way is in the PR mode. PR here, sensor program. And then going into the menu inside the camera and send the ISO there. That's for uh, manual lenses like the older A12 style. So after setting the ISO, the next step is to set the aperture and that is something that is done on the lens. Here it is already set with the dial. And then the third step is to pick the shooting mode. Here I have picked D for dip. That is basically aperture priority with the addition of after you take the light value reading, it will show the variance continually as the spot meter is moved from one area to the other. So having picked the uh, uh, shooting mode of D for diff, the light value uh, can be started by pressing the red button here and that will start the reading. And once that is released, that is effectively AE lock. It locks in the light value. The other way to start it is of a half press of the uh, shutter button on the opposite side. So that is how light value is stored in the Hasselblad 205 FCC. This is metering off the gray card. See the circle around the gray card? That's the metering at F2, it's at a 30th of a second. Okay, this is going to be very hard to see, but on the right it says 30th of a second and diff and zero on the left. The spot meter has been moved to the white card and the value is still stored, but the diff shows, you can barely see the plus zero and then the two bars on the right. So that's the reading difference from the gray card. The spot meter has been moved to the black card. Same light value metering stored. And now this shows minus two and uh, two bars. So that's all in reference to the gray card uh, meter reading, which was the original light value stored. So this is handheld, this is on macro, this is very hard to do. Okay, so it's almost the day of the shoot, but I showed you that little clip of the piece of paper and I had one idea on one side and one idea on the other. So I want to explain a little bit of that uh, before we take a look at the shoot. So I was looking for red and I had an idea to find a, a red fire hydrant uh, because I really like fire hydrants and I like the color red. And uh, so uh, one day I observed a uh, particular red fire hydrant and I thought, okay, I'll, this is the one I'm gonna take the picture of. And uh, what I'm gonna talk about is, right now is how to plan, um, how to plan a picture uh, and the challenges with it and how this idea had to change. Um, and also how I use the, uh, the camera to plan the change and evolve the picture. I knew it was going to be red and red fire hydrant. So the day I, I saw it, I didn't have a camera with me. And I also uh, didn't have anything to uh, a measuring tape. And so I was falling back to, all right, this is far away from where I am. I don't have a camera. I don't have a measuring tape but I know I want to take a picture of this fire hydrant, so I'm going to come back another day and take a picture of this particular fire hydrant. So I started to observe the subject a lot. So I measured it by standing next to it and having my placing my hand um, by my leg at the height of the fire hydrant. I walked back to the vehicle, I checked where that was 
on the vehicle and where it was relative to the door handle. And then I remembered that distance. But there was a challenge, and that is a distracting background. Uh, I did want to take the picture straight on, but there was a pole behind the, the fire hydrant, and that was going to be very distracting. So I imagined reframing it and being in an angle. But that really wasn't the composition I wanted. So those were the challenges. When I got back home, I uh, wrote down the height of the fire hydrant. I also measured the distance by taking several steps from the fire hydrant to that pole. And I decided, okay, I'm gonna shoot at f5.6 and I'm gonna blur out the pole a little bit. Well, the other thing is once I got home and I had that information, the other thing I realized is I didn't remember what the perspective of this lens, uh, the 110 millimeter was. So once I looked through it, uh, it had more compression. It's a little bit more of a, uh, a zoom. It's greater than, it's, it's equivalent to about a 70, yeah, 70 millimeter lens in 35 millimeter format. So once I started look, looking through it, I realized this idea really had to change. And then I decided, you know, I really want red. I'm going to go for the straight on composition that I was looking for. And I will deal with that pole by using F5.6 and a smaller depth of field to blur out the pole in the background. But I want to get as close and personal to that fire hydrant. So I was going back to my original inspiration of the color, uh, the shape and the texture of the fire hydrant and not compromising with that. Uh, and uh, f5.6 at that distance was going to be fine. So I ended up understanding that the distance of the pole was seven and a half feet behind the fire hydrant. So that's about uh, two and a half, uh, half meters. And the distance I needed to be from the fire hydrant to where the camera needed to be was about nine feet or about three meters. So with all that worked out, I I drew my storyboard on the other side of the paper of what I want my composition to be like. So that's what that little excitement was about. But I wanted to talk about that because um, we all encounter times when we want to take a picture and we don't have a camera and then we're inspired and we want to get back. So I just wanted to talk about that and how I used a little bit of science, a little bit of geometry uh, to plan the, the shoot and the Hasselblad 205 FCC. So let's, uh, uh, let's go take a look at some of that footage from, uh, from the shoot. It's early. We're gonna go shoot a fire hydrant this morning. So we're on the way. I'm on the way. We're on the way. We're going together. Okay. So we're here and there it is behind me. And just gonna get uh, things ready. Uh, camera and stuff and uh, get set up to shoot. That worked. Really happy about it. It's about the journey. I even decided before I took this picture that this was a success. It's just about getting out there and uh, doing what you love. So, uh, we're gonna go. 7, 19 in the morning. The one thing in all the excitement I forgot to do was press record when I was actually taking the picture of the fire hydrant. So what we're going to take a look at is the next picture I took so I can actually show how I set up the camera and uh, actually that second, this picture that I'm going to show you the footage of, I wasn't that excited about, but it shows me, shows me using the camera. So I'm going to share that with you. Okay, it's not the fire hydrant, but it's using, using the camera. Okay, so I'm taking a picture of these three planters behind me. It's at f11, taking my meter reading, take the dark slide out, shoot the picture. It's a slow shutter speed, probably about a sixth of a second. We'll see how it goes.
good. It's a good take. Okay, so now we're about ready to take a look at the picture. And this first picture is from the first lab that told me that they could basically do a, a development and a scan um, on a flatbed scanner. So it was going to end up being about four or five megapixels. And it was a very basic scan. And this is good enough to be able to email uh, to somebody to put on a, on a website. Uh, so it was very basic, and I didn't expect uh, much from this, and this is the first roll after about 10 years. I decided that I wanted to see more of the red and more texture and more detail. So I took it to another lab and had a 16 by 16 inch print made and this was uh, scanned at a uh, higher uh, level at 24 bit at 300 dpi and printed on um, Epson uh, uh, metallic print. So we'll take a look here. So. Uh, Please take a look at the color red, look at the um, uh, look at the shadow areas, look at the bright areas and just uh, just take a look and uh, look for whatever you see. So, probably one of the more important questions with the picture is where did I meet her uh, in this picture? So, for the fire hydrant, I took one uh, meter reading off the mulch in front and below the fire hydrant, and also on on the road on the on the gray asphalt. And actually, they ended up being the same um, same reading. Uh, and Another thing I wanted to share is this really was what I envisioned it to be. Uh, I had to go early in the morning so direct sunlight would not uh, land on the fire hydrant. Otherwise it would be too blown out and some parts would be too bright, too dark. So I had to get there uh, early enough in the morning. But I also needed a sunny day and I needed enough diffusion of light and enough light around uh, to just show the red. So, uh, all of these little observations went into the planning, and basically by the time I took the picture, it was relatively easy at that point. And, um, you know, no, no corrections to, to the picture afterwards. That's basically the picture. Uh, sure, it's, it's uh, uh, printed high, high quality lab, but all that detail started in the negative and film the Hasselblad 205 FCC. Well, everybody, thanks for watching. I'm so excited I got to share with you the Hasselblad 205 FCC and the color red with a red fire hydrant uh, today. 
So one of my challenges was trying to show you the same level of quality I can actually see with my eyes with good lighting uh, on the print. Uh, I am using a very basic vlogging video camera. It's the uh, Sony ZV-1 and um, I really like it. Uh, it's what I have right now. Um, I would like to be able to show you more of that. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed it and thank you for watching. If you watched the whole thing, I hope you were uh, as interested in it as, as I am. And uh, you know, through, through all of this, I had you in mind taking you along with me on the journey. So if you're not already, please subscribe. Uh, if you enjoyed any part of this video, if you liked anything, if you learned something, please give it a like and we'll look forward to the next video and the next image from the Hasselblad 205 FCC. Everybody, thank you so much. We'll see you again next time. It's just about getting out there and uh, doing what you love. <laughs>